Uh, Congressman Ruben Gallego is a Democrat of Arizona. He has spoken out uh, and about his experience on the floor of the House during the siege on January the 6th. He joins me uh, now. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us and making time for us this evening. First of all, what is your reaction as, as you learn uh, about high-level Republicans, as we just heard there, somebody like Mark Meadows, attempting to keep Donald Trump in power, despite the fact that it became overwhelmingly clear there was no fraud and that the president had lost the election? Well, number one, I mean, tells you what kind of little man that uh, Mark Meadows is, that he's willing to destroy this democracy for such an amoral person uh, as Donald Trump and his followers. Um, the fact that you're willing to throw away this, you know, great culture that we have, this democracy, this history of democracy for someone like Donald Trump, it shows you what a low human being you are. And really, it also tells you another problem. Like, Mark Meadows has always been a problem. He had, you know, he's one of the original, um, you know, uh, birthers uh, when it was, uh, you know, accusing Barack Obama of not being born, born in the United States. And, you know, uh, I've got to say, D.C., the media, they kind of just kept on accepting him as being some kind of normal politician. So we shouldn't be surprised, though, that if we accepted him uh, as a birther, if we didn't really ostracize him for that, that he didn't think that, you know, taking one step further and actually trying to destroy democracy, there would be no repercussions to it. So it really is upon really the, the whole D.C. media, the whole D.C. culture that, uh, you know, Mark Meadows felt that he could do this. And we should really learn from our mistakes. I would not be surprised if you see Mark Meadows on a bunch of, you know, boards and commissions the next couple of years. You'll probably see him in some Fortune 500 uh, you know, some Fortune 500 boards uh, getting his little salaries here and there, and everyone's going to pretend like nothing really happened. And that's why this continues, because we allow this, we normalize this type of behavior. Uh, but what Mark Meadows did was wrong. It was uh, treacherous. Uh, it was a betrayal to this country. Uh, and literally, I do believe he should be in jail right now. He should be in jail for a long last time. Uh, you served with Mark Meadows in Congress for a few years before he became the White House chief of staff. Um, you've seen his evolution, if you will. How does the behavior we have seen through his text messages and this reporting track for you with the man that you knew when he served in Congress? There's no evolution. I think the press had an evolution, believing that somehow when he became a chief of staff, he rose to the occasion. He never rose to the occasion. He was always a pretty foul human being. If you understand what he was voting for, what he was trying to destroy when he was in, in Congress, what, there's nothing that should surprise you about that. But because, but because we get into this like Washington, D.C. bubble, where we believe somehow if someone gets a title, they become better, um, we, you know, I think a lot of people were making mistakes for him, or not saying mistakes, making excuses for him. Mark Meadows is a horrible human being. He has been a horrible human being since he was in Congress, and he continued to be a horrible human being and a horrible, you know, American uh, when he was uh, chief of staff to the to the president. So, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised by any type of, you know, uh, attempts to rehabilitate his, uh, you know, his persona. Uh, but he's always been this person. Again, the person that was trying to spread the rumors that the president was not born in the United States, we should not be surprised that later he's also trying to overthrow, uh, you know, this country. Uh, and again, uh, I'm sure I'll see him at some point in one of the D.C. Uh, circuits, because uh, as, as, as it always happens, somehow these people just get, get allowed back in and they normalize that behavior. Let me get your thoughts really quickly, Congressman, about what we heard there from Mark Esper, another person who uh, served under President Trump uh, and, as you see now, trying to sell his book, promote his book, but also revealing some very dangerous revelations about what the president uh, considered, deliberated, uh, discussed to do, not just against the protests, but against our adversaries and, more troublingly, against our allies, like a country uh, such as Mexico. What, what do you make of this revelation, its timing of it, and just, uh, just how profoundly troubling it is? Well, number one, it tells you how stupid Donald Trump is. Um, how did he think a rocket was going to land in Mexico and Mexico and the rest of the world would not be able to attribute it to the United States? Um, there's only a couple countries in North America that actually have rocket capabilities, and it's us in Canada. Uh, and I doubt Cuba would actually get involved in something like this. So um, it's it just it's, it tells you how profoundly stupid the Trump uh, people are that they even consider this. Number two, it also tells you how they're willing to just break all norms uh, altogether, whether it is firing, uh, you know, a missile into another country that is aligned with us, or trying to shoot innocent, uh, you know, protesters. Uh, using American U.S. forces. Uh, they are so profoundly corrupt, uh, and they're not really moored to any type of, uh, you know, any type of uh, idea of what this country should be. 
uh, that it makes them extremely dangerous. Uh, and it really tells you how dangerous it is that if they get back in power, right? A lot of things they weren't able to accomplish right. uh, the first go is because they weren't smart enough and they just didn't have an experience. And they actually had a lot of people that were layered. They were start stopping them from doing a lot of their abuses. If they get back into power, they actually know exactly what they're going to do next. And what we know of fundamentally, the United States is going to absolutely change. You can; these people are not going to change. Trump is going to be even more corrupt, uh, more amoral, uh, and more dangerous should he get back in power. Yeah, I'm so glad you brought that point up because I just noted it a short while ago, saying you know the most dangerous threat to America was the man who led it for four years. And he is, by all accounts, the front runner for the GOP nomination in 2024. So that should tell you where the Republican Party is and, unfortunately, where America is in this moment of history. Uh, Congressman Ruben Gallego, uh, you did not mince your words tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Greatly appreciate your insights.